Now we're back to the Valor book, tying Catskill style dry flies. Now you saw the last one I did was the Quill Gordon. And the next one up, we're just going chapter by chapter. The next one is the Red Quill. Right there. Now that's actually kind of close to the, um, the, the Quill Gordon. It's, it's Honestly, it's the same thing, and, but instead of a peacock quill, you got a um, the stem of a of a Rhode Island Red. Now, um, this is kind of not easy to come by. This Rhode Island Red, and the reason is is because I, I really don't. There's like a there's maybe two flies that you use a Rhode Island Red in, and one of them is this one. You're not even using the fibers. You're just using the stem. It's kind of ridiculous, but. Uh, and I don't even know what the other one is. I just I just could have sworn there was a second one. But I mean, it's a bad combination when you got only two flies that you can tie, and this is like the biggest bird on the planet. I mean, this thing is the size of a herring. A stupid thing. It's huge, and um, um, you know, you know, hackle growers they don't they don't really want to feed a bird for you know a ton of food just to be able to sell stems to tie a red quill. I mean, it seems ridiculous. And this is really, as far as I know, I don't know any other company. You know, Whiting probably does it, but, uh, you know, I haven't seen a Whiting, but Sidling Hill Hackle, they, they have it. And I, I think um, they have a deal with Deddy to, to, um, to grow these birds. So... Red quill. What is a red quill? Well, it's a, it's a Hendrickson. It's a Hendrickson. And, um, we are, it's a male Hendrickson. And we're using the same hook as we did last time, this old Alcock, size 10. Everything we tie is going to be a size 10. Now, technically speaking, a 10 is probably mm, a little too big for a Hendrickson. I mean, it's not like I'm tying on a 4, but it's, um, it's just a hair too big. But, for a frame, it's perfect. So thread, thread. I'm really going old school here. I'm going uh, daddy wax thread. So this, if you don't know what this is, is is uh, this is white thread run through a waxing machine, and I, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure how I do how they do it. I've never seen the machine before. I've just heard about it, but I, I know it's it's got to be a strange process because. If you look at this thread here, the bobbin has the slit here, and the slit's going in the wrong direction, which means, you know the slit where you tie the thread off so it doesn't unravel? Well, it's going in the wrong direction, which means it should be going, like, this way, but it's going this way, which means you can't tie this thread off in the slit. So who knows? Who knows what happened here? But uh, clearly it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a strange process. One, one day I'll, I'll try and get a picture of that machine. Sorry about the coffee, I just, uh, got to drink the coffee, got to, got to drink my second cup. All right, we're going to tie on here now. Um, again, we're going to be doing this Catskill style, so we got to start it here. Now, one thing we got to be careful of is, is, is that this thread, this is not, <laughs> this is not Giorgio Benici 12 volt, let me tell you, this stuff, is 8.0, but it's honestly the thickness of 6.0. So you, every single turn counts here. Every single one. Um, do, you don't put turns on that don't matter. Every every turn you make has got to has got to mean something. And yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you watched that that wood duck wing tying methods video that I did, but basically I just put together a whole bunch of ways to tying a wood duck wing. There's a bunch, um, but um, this one I'm really just going to use the whole. I'm going to go Dave Brandt style, the whole the whole feather, not taking the tip out or anything. I would 
let's say that this is too short, but I can pull it in. Just a hair longer. What do we think? Do we think it's too short? Remember, if you're using a thread that's 6 out, no screwing around. I just put three turns in there and I made them all count. And now, normally I put two turns in for the figure eight. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put one turn in. Well, one turn in each way, obviously. And now let's just double check that we have an even amount here. I think we do. And now again, normally I put two lashes in, but I'm only going to put one lash in. There we go. Alright, I think we're just leaning a hair forward, but easily fixable. Just put a couple more turns in. Yeah, I just, just cut off these butts with a razor blade to make them nice and close. This is what you want. I'm going to put the tail in here. And I'll show you why in a second. We, we tie the tail in now, and then we work back tie in the quill. Uh, so this is done. Just like the quill Gordon. And decent length. I'm just going to cut the ends off this. If we just lick them together. It'll make things easier. It's a little bit long. Just hold them together. It's going to be nice and thin. Now we need to leave one turn, one turn to put the quill on. Now I got the quill soaking here. And uh, so, yeah, so just to explain here is you're taking the, the feather. Or a good, a good long feather is probably smart, five inches or whatever. Because in reality, the first two inches is useless because it's too thin. Uh, you know what? I'll show you. I had one already, but I'll, I'll show you. Maybe not the first two inches. Maybe the first like inch and a half, maybe inch. And but hold. It's good to just have it there for now so that you could hold on to something. And all you're really doing is just, you're just stripping away the fiber, see that? And I've been soaking this one for, I don't know, three, four hours. I don't know if you need to soak it for that long, but if 
you feel like you're going to tie some of these, like tomorrow, just put them in a bowl of hot water and put it on your desk and when you wake up in the morning they'll be great. Now, something important is, is that there's a, there's a different discoloration with this stem. There's like white on one side when you get further up and there's red on the other side. And that's kind of important, as far as I'm concerned at least, that's important. You, you kind of want, you don't need the white and red, although some people like that, but at least a, a, a red and a lighter red. And all I'm doing here is I'm just squeezing the tip, flattening it out so that when you tie it in, it uh, it's not as prominent. Now, the reason I said you, you leave one turn um, is because you want to turn down. Meaning, you're turning down, so now when you turn this quill up, it's the first thing that come, it's it'll be the first thing you see. Now we want to make sure that this is, if you can even open up your thread a little bit by spinning your bobbin just to make sure it's smooth. Yeah. And now if you feel like, like I feel like, I want just a little bit more here to create more of a taper. You can, but in reality, you're going to be tying on the hackle right around here, so it's not it's not that big of a deal. So now that first turn is right at the is right at the tail. Make sure your tail is on top, and now you can make those turns right next to each other important and you can see you know being a little thin in the back is good so to, don't cut off like three inches of that the tip but definitely an inch is an inch and a half is probably useless And I believe we are. Will I do one more? Yeah, I just see how it looks here. I think it looks okay with one more. I mean that 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 one's gonna be covered pretty much. So now I'm just tying it off. I don't know, maybe we should hit this with some UV. We did with the, the Quill Gordon. Now I know, I mean, we know obviously that that um, they did put head cement on the body. They actually counter wrapped it with thread. The Daddies did, and I'm fairly certain that when Joe ties them for somebody, he still does that as well. He does like an X-wrap. He goes back and X-wraps them and then he uses, now he might not use head cement nowadays, he might use UV. I don't want to use too much here. And I don't want to take away of the texture, meaning like that roll texture. So what I'll do is I'll make sure it soaks in. Just give it a second, let it soak into the to the, the cracks and the seams between the stem. And I'll get my feather ready while that, that seeps in. And we're using another done. Same same thing again. This uh, this one just happens to be a whiting. But the tail I was using was a Metz. Because it was the only thing I had that was big. And right there. 
Right, let's hit this thing with the light now. We'll tie the stem in. I've said this many times. Make sure you tie the stem in and leave a little space between where you tie it in and the actual fibers because when you make that first turn, you don't want the fibers to go all over the place. Now, this is important. Look how big this, how thick this is and how thin this is. You gotta be careful of that because what'll happen is is that if you, you wrap this hackle onto here, it's gonna be bigger and then when you come onto this part, it's thin, it's gonna be smaller and you're gonna have a problem, it's gonna look strange. We're just going to build this up a hair. There we go. And we're going to make some good turns. I'm using the inside of the feather to the back. I'm getting hackle pliers. I should have put them on in the beginning. There we go. Yeah, a couple of fibers out of place, but it just needs a little cleanup. And then I think it'll be, you know, basically good. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you the front here. Show you the front. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right, we got uh, nine more to go. Nine more to go. A couple I have never even tied before. This one I haven't tied that much of. But it's cool. Maybe I should fish this this year. Huh. I don't know. Maybe I gotta fish it. All right. Red quill. Thanks, everyone.